A while back, somebody commented on one of my videos saying that I should cover Theodoro, and my reply was, if he gets 500 likes, that I will. And boy did he got the 500 likes, he got more than that even. And today we have our Theodoro video. If we get 10,000 likes, we'll do the second part for this and get the Gothic Invasion achievement. Plus, leave a comment with whatever nation you want me to cover. And if your comment gets a thousand likes, I will cover that nation. No matter what nation it is. Also consider subscribing if you enjoyed the videos. It would really encourage me to make more videos like these in the future. Theodoro in 1444 is honestly a very strange nation. First off, it's a gothic nation and the goths at this point are basically remnants of the goths that decided not to migrate into the west. So the Visigoths, Ostrogoths and these guys have common ancestry. Regardless, there's three actual strategies when playing as uh, Theodoro. It's not an impossible start. It's actually Actually quite easy if you ask me it's all about molding yourself on whatever RNG you get so I'll tell you the three strategies now and then afterwards we decide what we go for in this run based on whatever RNG we get obviously you want to go for the gothic invasion achievement if you play as Theodoro and for that we need to have all of the Germanic provinces as our own now in order to achieve this option one is that we attack Circassia snake our way into the Georgian lands which is all Orthodox lands and and use this as our base for our starting economy and military to fight against the Crimeans, the Great Horde, and then snake our way all the way across Poland into the Germanic areas and start killing off everything here. The second option is we no CB the nation of East Phrygia, then we wait for somebody else to attack them whilst we have them occupied, we vassalize them, take a province from the nation that attacked them, and we lose our capital here, and we switch our capital there, which means we can make that our core, and from there we can start expanding into the HRE. The third option, and this is basically the middle ground, we no CB one of the Irish nations, do the same thing we did in East Frisia, blob and get a massive economy by taking the English Isles, and then after we march our way into the Germanic areas and get the achievement. Obviously the difference between East Frisia version and the uh, Irish nation version is that we do that in case East Frisia gets insane allies like Denmark or somebody that you cannot really fight at the start. And the hardest and the biggest slug is just staying here and fighting everybody else around here until you're strong enough to march your way into the Germanic areas. Regardless of whatever we go for, first we gotta get our rivals. We're gonna go for the three rivals we got at the start, always the same boyos. Summon the diet, go for whichever agenda best suits us. Then we give out the plus one privileges, of course, the patronage of the arts as well, and the supremacy over the crown. We will be giving the expansion a zealotry that gives us 5% morale of armies when fighting heretics and heathens, but not right now because our initial war is going to be against orthodox nations unless something else happens and Crimea attacks us which is not such a bad thing by the way I prefer to be in a defensive war against them after that we're going to seize crownlands we're not developing the province here once because we only have one province so our autonomy cannot go above zero in our capital and we will be giving the minus 25 advisor cost reduction privileges but we'll do that after we get one stability first let's also make our starting ruler a general pretty good while four shock one siege not bad at all and we're gonna get 2,000 more units standard units and we're gonna get the free company right before we start our war not right now let's also get some claims we're gonna get the first claim on Emirati and the second one on Crimea depending on what allies Crimea has we might be able to fight them but if they got super strong allies that's out of the table and we just have to go with the Emirati option all right so it seems like Emirati actually allied Circassia and Crimea allied Kandar so both options are actually viable. I can definitely handle both Kandar, Crimea and Emirati, Circassia. On the other hand, East Frisia allied Friesland. Ireland is still on the table, however, as most of these don't really have any proper alliance sets. Taikonel, for example, has no allies. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The most important thing in EU4 is being situationally aware. So I just managed to get my claim on the Crimeans, but I really wanted to attack Emirati first because it's an easy war and I can get all of Emirati and Circassia. However, I also noticed that Crimea is improving relations with Nogai and with Kazan. And if we go to the opinion map mode, we see that Crimea is really close to getting an alliance with Nogai. I'm talking about three or four months here. So because of that, the plan has changed. I'm actually going to attack Crimea before they get an extra alliance. I'm going to get the free company and I'm also going to get the Circassian company, but I need some more money from that. So I'm going to get a few loans, but don't worry, we can have up to 121 loans. So it's not really any issue. Circassian, 
Ones hire them right after the free company. We'll wait if we can for one or two months to get a little bit of our morale back before we actually attack the Crimeans. Hopefully they don't actually get the alliance with no guy by that point. All right, we got a little bit of morale. Still, it's not too much and that means that the Crimeans are gonna attack us and try to stack wipe us. As expected, they are gonna attack us here. Hopefully we get some good rolls. We got a zero. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> we got a nine afterwards, so we actually did win this. That was really, really close, not gonna lie. That was seriously close. Now, because we won the battle, we can start sieging this down and get a claim back on the Crimean, so we get some extra siege ability. Oh, look at that, boys. We got one stability event, so we can actually stab up once and get the second stability right after that. Uh, okay, I got one more stab event. Freaking seriously? Three stability? Honestly, I would trade that stability simply for better outcome in this siege man this is taking so long i don't know how other people managed to take this fort in four months oh dude are you kidding me we're actually gonna go bankrupt on the 7th of april 48 that's less than eight months bro oh god it's obviously because we're over the force limit by 10 ducats we're not gonna reach that point though i'm faithful this is actually gonna fall at 21 percent come on you have to fall at 21 oh boy it didn't fall oh no we have two more ticks we have have to get this in the next two ticks otherwise we are completely done for alhamdulillah we got it boys we got it 640 days which is normal for the fort in crimea it's one of the toughest forts to ever get let's go ahead and also kill off these boys here actually we'll wait for one month so we don't actually give a free fort over to the crimean army here oh oh they, they baited us they baited us oh no 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 please we gotta win this we have got to win this boys oh oh lord jesus that was really really freaking close man okay we have how many months until we go bankrupt we have until july because we're actually uh in control of crimea it increased our lifeline a little bit let's wipe out that army over here as well and uh get the rest of their provinces we should be able to piece them out now uh i can take most of the provinces not all that's for sure since we've taken more land the amount of loans that we can take have also increased a little bit so we're not going bankrupt anytime soon at least which means we can take a few more provinces before we uh, peace out the Crimeans. All right, yeah, I'm close to 100% sure I'm gonna get my army completely wiped out here since this is a step province and they get the 25% extra shock bonus and they have six cavalry units, so I'm really gonna lose that. I'm gonna peace them out now. Sometimes it's better to peace out early and not lose out everything. I feel like this is fair enough. They keep two provinces and they're more than happy to give me this noise. Let's go, boyos. This also means we've doubled in size. What am I talking about here we didn't double we quadrupled in size look at this we went from nine development to 64 development before we go fully bankrupt we're gonna also attack the nation of Imireti together with Circassia and basically use the second war as our lifeline that prevents us from going bankrupt we can use some of our diplo points to lower the war exhaustion core up all of these newly taken provinces expand Theodora helps out a little bit as well and let's go with the second war now a Circassia and Imereti, both of which I'm gonna fully annex, of course. Let's get claims on what's left of Crimea for when the uh, truce is over with them. Pretty sure Circassia's army is hiding over here, so I'm gonna try and wipe out their armies first. This way, dividing and wiping out their armies before they merge makes it easier for me to keep them both in check in case I have to go bankrupt during this war. We will try our best to prevent the bankruptcy. We can take 33 ducats in loans now. We also get access to the Cossacks now, so let's give out some privileges for these boyos cossack self-governance cossack leaders as well and we'll even give out the other ones after these initial wars are over we are about to go bankrupt uh, right now actually once this month has ticked but in order to prevent that we're gonna sell some titles first off and we can also debase whenever we need to extend this a little bit it's gonna cost us some corruption but it's worth it because otherwise there's no other way you could actually take this much land and expand this much in the first four years of of the game without using these strats and by the way if you guys want to check the save i'm gonna make this available to everyone on my discord all you need to do is use the link in the description to join my discord
Discord and access the save game in case you want to have your own little fun as Theodoro. Whilst you're sieging this land down, make sure that you actually are getting your relations improved with Muscovy. We want to ally them after the war just in case we need to go bankrupt. And there you go, we got 87 with 12. So once the war is over, which is giving us a thousand on the minus, we can actually ally the Muscovites. All right, boys, we got Circassia as well. That means we can piece these boyos out. We're not able to take all of their provinces because they still have some troops over here. But what we're going to do is we're going to take most of their provinces and we're going to take all the money that they got as well, which in return means that we have another few months before we go bankrupt and we can use these other few months to kill off Emirati and take all of their stuff as well. I waited for all of my trips to get here because despite outnumbering Emirati, this is a mountain fort, so <laughs> they get a massive defender advantage. Look at what I'm talking about here, boyos. Minus two dice roll confirmed for me. Still, we did win that, obviously. We're gonna leave one unit behind. The other boys we're gonna use to stack wipe the entire Emirati army. Sadly, it looks like Karako Yunlu attacked Samske and fully sieged down and annexed Georgia already, so I'm not gonna be able to go into these areas unless they leave these guys alive somehow. I can, however, attack Trebizond, so I'm gonna get a claim on them. I'm also gonna be banning the Circassian Guard now, so I don't hemorrhage so many ducats, and with minus two per month, I actually have enough time to fully siege down Imiredi. So now with Imiredi out, essentially it is time for me to chill for a little while. We've basically managed to get 114 development in the first six years of the game. And this is Iron Man compatible, but the big brain moves are about to come right now. Let's get that juicy alliance I was talking about with the Muscovites. So we have our back covered in case we need to go bankrupt. And let's check whichever nation we can also get another alliance with. Karaman would be willing to but i know karaman's gonna get completely wiped out by um the ottomans i feel like i can definitely get an alliance with hungary especially if they rivaled poland because poland's gonna be one of my targets and they did rival poland actually so that is the best alliance for me i'm gonna start improving relations with them we're also gonna make the great horde our primary target here more than likely the muscovites yep muscovites would accept joining in here but i need to get a claim and i can use the muscovites to take care of uzbek whilst i'm the one attacking in the great horde themselves so we're gonna get that after we get the claim on trebizond of course obviously we need to chill for a while we actually have to chill for a while and i mean it this time okay because we need to finish coring all of these bad boys up i would have loved to take all of circassia so i have access to kazi Kamuns before they get their alliance with the ottomans there you go they're improving relations with the ottomans they always try to get this alliance with the ottomans and it's really annoying it essentially prevents me from ever having access to them until i fight the ottomans at least so i use the money that I had to pay off as many of my loans as I could because they were four ducat loans they were literally a pain to keep and they would have driven up my inflation by a lot more so now I'm gonna debase currency as you can see it's 58 ducats for each time I debase my currency and for debasing currency once I can pay off 14 of my loans which means I'm gonna get less loans than my maximum loans and such I won't need to be struggling with bankruptcy anymore essentially Swiss economics in a nutshell boy we also can accept Crimean as our first accepted culture and that's going to give us extra income and manpower from the Crimean provinces. We're going to make Trebizond our next target here. We've made them our rival. Let's pay for our army maintenance and let's actually go to war with Trebizond before the big war against the uh, Great Horde of course. Poor Trebizond, they really want to be our allies. Sadly, I'm going to turn them into my frontier fort against the Ottomans because this is a mountain fort so once I take the mountain fort it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to hold out against the ottomans when they do attack at least until my muscovite allies come and help me out oh hannah banana we got the fort scanner that somehow rhymed i i think that somehow rhymed i'm not 100 sure but i think so all right now it's time to uh get rid of the rebel provinces and then after attack the great horde maybe we can even rival them now we can rival a noise we can also rival akoyunlu but we've been warned by karakoyunlu so we cannot attack nations that we have a common border with Karakoyunlu. That means Akoyunlu for now. We're also keeping the fort in Trebizond, the only fort we have aside from the capital one. We don't have any more economic problems. We got five loans of 1% each because we got the burger loans, but we have 11 corruption. It's horrible. Corruption destroys our country. We're role playing Romania, guys. But not to fear, not to fear at all. We'll be fine. After the war with the Great Horde, we'll chill. I promise after that war, we'll actually chill 
and we'll lower our corruption, okay? That's what's gonna happen here. We're setting the province of Majar as our main target here. Calling in Muscovy, promising land, calling in Riazan as well, and do remember before you declare the war that you should have your provinces of vital interest set up. The south part of the Great Horde is more than enough. We actually want to directly control the Astrakhan areas, which are the rich parts of the Great Horde. I don't mind giving some of the northern parts to the uh, Muscovites in order to keep the the alliance with them because later on we're gonna start munching into the Lithuanians and the Poles and in order to do that I'm gonna need the help of the Muscovites. Look at this guys top-notch AI right here Mwah! Muscovite entire army sieging one city whilst they let me deal with the Great Horde's army bruh. This war was ridiculously easy because most of the heavy lifting was done by the Muscovites. Thankfully Riazan even managed to get a hold of uh, Tambov so Muscovy cannot even get any provinces if they want to. That means I can take all of the land here Muscovy's not even upset about it and I don't have much of a coalition just a few random nations here potential coalition but look at this boys we've literally got the biggest name in the area and that's what it's all about it's about having the biggest name in the area everybody knows this also I could have just taken one province released the nation of Astrakhan and feed them back the course but that would have taken at least 15 years of extra work and by taking these lands directly and by chilling because that's what I'm doing now I'm actually chilling in 10 years from now I'll be so powerful that I'll be able to do the wars that I need to do instead of waiting for 30 years this is essentially investing for the nearby future so I was literally this close to get the alliance with Hungary and guess what happened they allied the French are you kidding me right now the French literally just cucked me from getting hungry for real now bruh also what the schnapps is happening in the British Isles the English have no logic here man and why did they not take the province of Roxburghshire. They're committing the weirdest border gore. Speaking of border gore, the Muscovites could also have fully annexed Novgorod, but they chose to let them keep one province. No idea why, but if I was a little bit of a schnapple dupe, I would have uh, vassalized these boyos and then fed them back the cores. However, I kind of need Muscovy to help me out, and I don't have the strength to fight them also. Speaking of strength, let's actually lower the autonomy everywhere so we get some more income and manpower from our provinces and we are close to finishing coring all of these lands we also can get 108 ducats from our loans now so we're gonna replace the old 50 ducat loans and we're gonna spend some time now rooting out the corruption in our lands and of course the ottomans also warned us because it's not enough getting warned by one nation we're such a public menace to everybody that we have to get warned by the two greatest powers next to us Actually, I'm still pretty close to getting the alliance with the Hungarians, so maybe I should just push a little bit more for this. I'm gonna insult the uh, Poles, maybe this is gonna give me the relation boost I need. Only two difference- oh, I so can get this right now. Alright, everything is cored, that means we can make it full states and, once more, lower the autonomy in these provinces as well. And since we have just had a rebellion in these provinces, we don't need to worry about any more rebellions here, even though we're lowering the autonomy. The only rebellions to come are gonna be from Emirati. It looks like the Ottomans just took two provinces right next to us. Actually, two provinces I had a vital interest in. So I do expect an Ottoman invasion at some point. The good news is that we can get the alliance with the Hungarians now, though. So that should give us a little bit extra protection against the Ottomans should they choose to attack us. Muscovy is asking me to give them sailors in exchange for favors. What would they even use the sailors for, man? What? I feel like the worst thing that can happen now is the Ottomans get the event where they make the uh, Crimea a march and it has not triggered yet so it will eventually happen once we get 10,000 likes we'll do the second part for this run and if you enjoyed this video you're gonna love this video up here and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support